I think the freedom of the press has always been hugely important. It's an important pillar of any transition to democracy. I think as part of that, um, social media needs to be free and it needs to be unrestricted and it would be um, ridiculous um, and self-defeating for, for any kind of government to try and clamp down on it because every time governments do clamp down on social media, um, it's easy to find a way around that. But I think um, if we want to think um, more generally about what we need in place for a transition to a proper democracy with very strong roots, then the real danger is that we um, are working with very shallow tools with social media because social media is something that you can do from your spare room, you can do with no involvement. It can, on occasion, take the place of real political engagement. It can become a kind of slacktivism. And I think that there's a real danger that we fetishize these current movements in North Africa and the Middle East and imagine them to be wholly led by social media. And if we go down that route, then we might well find that um, democracy turns out to be a flash in the pan. I mean, political scientists for, for years have talked about the kind of institutions that you need in place, and there are all sorts of arguments as to which ones, but social media isn't enough. Freedom of the press is hugely important. I think that social media is often a kind of residual category. So I think social media fills a gap. It fills a gap when people aren't allowed to say what they think. It fills a gap when the mainstream media is not doing what it should. On its own, I don't think it can achieve very much. And I think the real danger is that if social media is used less as a tool, in other words, firing people out, firing people up to go on the streets, if it's used more as a kind of dopamine, as a, as a way of letting them express themselves almost as a kind of cathartic political release rather than having them out in the streets, I think that's a real danger, that it becomes a kind of self-reinforcing loop in which people who already, already agree with one another talk to other people who already think the same thing and it becomes a kind of electronic echo chamber. In short, I don't think it can really sustain any kind of long-term political evolution. Well, I don't think that social media can do anything about um, either um, discrimination faced by ethnic minorities or problems with, with gender rights. I mean, I mean, those are very kind of long-term, perhaps um, intractable social issues. I'm not quite sure what a movement based around social media would do. What I do know is that there's a, quite a lot of easy talk around empowerment. And really, it's not terribly empowering to spend all of your time typing things into the internet. It's much more empowering to go out on the street or perhaps down to the mosque and try and convince someone of your perspective. And I think, again, when we talk about ethnic minorities, um, they really need to take their arguments outside a narrow coterie of electronic activists in order to make any headway. And I think there's a real danger of marginalization of people who want to be around people who think like themselves. Well, that's, that's the $64,000 question, really. Why then? Um, I think, for all sorts of reasons, those countries were ripe for a change. Um, first of all, there was a kind of ingrained sense of hopelessness among you know, millions of people living in, in, in places like Damascus and places like Cairo, which kind of fed a general cynicism about the regime. Huge kind of... Um, stark levels of corruption and regimes which had only really sustained, or and this is the really interesting thing, I think only really managed to sustain themselves by arguing with the American State Department that it was either them or Al-Qaeda. Now that argument helped, I think, to sustain those, those regimes um, long past their sell-by date, but eventually things had to come to a collapse. There were also demographic or generational differences, so vast quantities of young people who didn't really have the same fear, or who didn't really have the same, um, I suppose, um, sense of the past, and were prepared to try something new. All of those things, I think, have nothing to do with social media, and really need to be understood before we get to the tools that they were using.